Now if I was to draw that together on one chart, complexity, which I just talked about, complexity is a combination of structure and texture, so having all those things together. And so if we were to put complexity here, and we're to put tannin here. Now tannin is very important when we talk about red grapes. I can give you a wine that has a very, very small amount of tannin, but if it's picked unripe, if you watch my ripeness video, you'll understand that. So if you have a very, very small amount of tannin and you pick it unripe, that wine will taste tannic. You can pick a grape that has tons of tannin, but if it's ripe, it'll still taste soft and round. So don't get confused between amount of tannin and ripeness of tannin. They're two very dramatically different things. So on this chart, I'm only talking about ripe tannins. So the varietal, and this is no offense to Pinot Noir, because I love Pinot Noir, but Pinot tends to have, relative to other varietals, a little less complexity and a little lower amount of tannin. Syrah and Zinfandel sort of fit up in this quadrant. Bordeaux fits in this realm. And then California Bordeaux typically has been in this realm. Now remember the last chart that I just showed you, uh, I don't know if you watched my introduction, but my first degree is in engineering and everything has to be overly complicated. So this is three dimensional, of course. And if you take my first chart that I just talked about in terms of cool fruit and warm fruit, and remember cool fruit was like um, black currant, blackberry, black cherry, walnut, blueberry, red cherry, etc. as we get warmer all the way up to strawberry. If you think about the direction that I want to take the style of my Cabernets and my Merlots that I'm making under the Goldschmidt label or the Forefathers label, I want to move them in this direction. And this is not that I'm trying to decrease complexity, but what I am doing is I'm moving more and more away from that, from the greener herbaceous Cabernets that we used to make in the 80s and early 90s. I'm trying to make them sweeter, riper and rounder. So hopefully the, you'll see that in the Goldschmidt wines that you try today and also the Forefathers Cabernet that I make from the Alexander Valley. All three of those wines I've been making in this style since 1990. Very sweet, very ripe, very lush and trying to make them more and more fruit driven.